That's amazing. Um, hang on one second, because I found a just 18 month old kid that just cru cruised right in. Hey, buddy, <laughs> say hi. He's walking. What's in. up? <laughs> say hi, Max. Let me give you your mom. Sorry, dude. Uh, no, you're good. The it factor. The most overused and undefinable phrase in sports. If you have it, everyone knows it. Trent McDuffie applying a lever. The qualities that many desire, but very few possess. Dropped in the backfield by Thibodeau. Well, what really is it? Who has it? And how did they get it? Britton Covey gives Utah a jolt of momentum. That's what we're here to discover. We'll take the helmet off the Pac-12's elite performers to learn more about their journey towards success on Saturdays. I'm Yogi Roth, and welcome to The It Factor. Okay, welcome back, or welcome to The It Factory, presented by Zayo. I'm your host, Yogi Roth, and you know the deal in this show. We take the helmet off of the student-athlete, or former student-athlete in this case today, and dive into their story, their essence, their journey. And today is someone whose career I've covered since he was in high school. He's made you stand up. You cheered for him. You have watched him torment your team as possibly, but you've always had a good time whenever you heard Max Borgie talk. Max, welcome to the It Factory. Thank you for joining the show, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Yes. Yeah, so give us the pronunciation. First name. Go. <laughs> Everyone knows me as Max, but my real name is Massimiliano. Um, long one. My dad was, dad was born in Italy. Uh, right, right, right around uh, Milan. So he named me Massimiliano. He's a real Italian guy. And obviously, I don't look super Italian, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's kind of my real name. It's it's funny because not a lot of people actually know that about me, but uh, long name for sure. So that name, that identity, did you connect to that as a kid? Do you still connect to that now? And if so, how? Yeah. Um, Honestly, what's what's sad is everyone in my family has been to Italy but me. <laughs> um, I've been so busy with sports my whole life, and um, it's, it's only gotten busier the older I've got, so I've actually never had an opportunity to go. But my roommate in college and best friend is actually now going to play in Italy. He just got an opportunity to go play in Italy. So uh, when things slow down for me here shortly, hopefully um, I can make a trip out to Italy and go actually check it out and watch my boy play some football. So I'm excited well, for let's that. Let's go. Who is that? <laughs> Dylan Sherman. He was a he's a linebacker yeah. for Washington State for a couple of years, and yeah, he just some Italian coaches reached out to him, and he's going to play for pizza. So <laughs> we got to let him know to read the book, playing for pizza. Yeah, and I, that's what I've heard. I, I've never read it, but uh, I've told him one of my old coaches, my my little league coach, actually went and played in Parma, and he he talked about that book, and he told me to suggest it to a buddy. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I ended up playing in Australia. I didn't have the skill set that you had, but what I learned was that football is also a global sport. You grew up, I read a great article where your dad was quoted around how clearly he grew up around soccer and the first time he found football. I think a lot of times when we talk to players that are about to get drafted, uh, their parents push football on them or open their eyes to football. How did you find yourself around this oblong shaped ball versus the circular one that your dad grew up playing? Yeah, honestly, um, grew up playing every sport. And uh, my mom actually owned a gymnastics gym pretty much my whole youth. So I was always in there and um, just doing different classes and all that, which I feel like has actually helped me in football in the long run. But um, it's funny because I would have never played football until I met my best friend from high school who I actually played little league and high school football with his name was Ryan Marquez he's he's at Wyoming playing football now um his dad who was my coach who was in Italy like I was just saying he uh he kind of introduced football to me and he said you should give it a try um try it out you might like it you might enjoy it and uh started with flag in like first grade and then first first uh first grade of pads was second and then been running back ever since. So it's been quite the journey and I've, I've loved every moment of it. I had a chance to talk to a Hall of Famer the other night, Eric Dickerson. He came on this show and he said in his first game in seventh grade, he returned a kickoff for a touchdown 
And not only did he realize that he loved football, but he felt his love of football in his bones. Curious for you, like, did you have that moment where you were like, oh yeah, this thing, this is, this is my jam, this sport. Yeah, I'd say it was fourth grade. Um, I'll never forget this play. It was kind of like my first like big play. <laughs> it kind of shocked people. And I was like, wow, this, this kid's got potential, I feel like. But uh, fourth grade, we're still playing on 60-yard, 70-yard fields. It wasn't even a 100-yard field then because we're all so little. Um, I get a toss to the left, and I take it. And I hurdled the kid and then ended up taking it to the end zone. Uh, it, was, it was a real big play. I scored, but that the refs actually threw a flag. It was illegal to hurdle in Little League. So it got called back, but I remember doing that and I was like, I love this. This is, I love this game. I love the sport. And uh, it's kind of funny because I'll have to find the pictures, but I have pictures of me doing it in Little League, high school and college now, just hurdling defenders and it's, it's pretty funny. The signature move from x -Board. We all thought it was the cigar in the Apple Cup, <laughs> uh, but no, it's hurdling. Uh, we're going to get to the Apple Cup. Don't worry about that. But for you it, growing up, all of a sudden, it felt like the lore of Max Borgie grew, right? Whether you were getting recognized in junior high and people knew you for, as the guy who hurdled someone um, or when your recruiting process began and you one time committed to Colorado. Of course, you ended up at Washington State. But when, when you were in that process of people defining you from the outside, did your love for the craft ever diminish? And if that flame ever got lower, how did you make sure it got reignited? Yeah, I wouldn't say my love ever diminished like that. Um, I really don't play it for the people or all that. I, I kind of play for myself. I not, not obviously not for myself, but I, I have such a love for this game and a passion for this game that it, it's a lot bigger than all those outside things, all the offers, all the stars, all the accolades, you know, like it's awesome and that's a part of the game and it's 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 bless, a blessing when you get stuff like that but i just truly genuinely enjoy playing the game and i really enjoy playing running back so um yeah <laughs> so how do you how do you describe or how can you try to describe the love you have for the for the game it's been my whole life and it's been i wouldn't say football defines me but football is something that's been such a big impact in my life and it's kind of shaped every little opportunity I've got in my life that it's can't really even put words into it. How much this game really means to me. Um, it's a humbling game. It'll teach you a lot of life lessons. There's, there's ups and downs. And I think that's, it's kind of like life. Um, football is a great game because it's a team game, team sport, and you meet many great people. And uh, I've made many great friends and had many great coaches throughout my career. It's just been such a special and, unique thing to have in my life. It, it's, it's hard to even really put into words how big and important this game has been to me. Um, I've definitely been humbled by the game and I've definitely learned a lot from the game and I'm just I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in right now. Still to come on the It Factory. I hate losing more than I like winning. So I, that's really it. And uh, it's, it's just real natural. <laughs> Delora. Borgie with the catch, and room to go, the hurdle, and he's down to the 25-yard line. Yeah, I, I, my wife always makes fun of me because I literally slept with a football from like, I think, seventh grade till I was 22, <laughs> right? Like that was, that was the relationship, right? That was the marriage, and it's a love that's really hard to describe. And when it gets hard, it's like you love that thing even harder. For you, you, you know, we're going to go to one school, you end up going to Wazoo, you had a chance to go to Stanford and follow in a guy who you're going to get comp to a ton during the draft, which you know who I'm going to say, Christian McCaffrey. You know, when, when those things were happening, like how did you find clarity and how do you find clarity now when faced with decisions? Yeah, I mean, I talked to loved, one, loved ones and reflect on myself and obviously a lot of praying and um, just kind of figuring out what the best situation would be. And obviously with this game, there's been a lot of tough decisions I've had to make where it's committing to schools, staying, transferring, uh, you name it, declaring all that. It's all big decisions, but uh, luckily I have some great people in my corner and they've, they've really helped lead me to, to every uh, decision I've made. And I've kind of just bet on myself. And every time I've bet on myself, I know that um, it's in my hands. So all power to me. Amen, man. 
I remember calling one of your games a couple of years ago and you scored a touchdown and you did the chest and the point up much like C-Mac Christian did uh, when he was in college and still does in the NFL. Is there a, a bond? Like when did you first meet him? Did you try to model some of your game after him? Yeah. I mean, I've always looked up to him. He's been obviously a great player. He's one of the best in the NFL and we're both from Colorado. So I kind of grew up watching him. I remember it was his, senior year state game and I was probably in eighth grade I went and watched it and he just tore him up and I was like oh this kid's legit <laughs> um but yeah I've, I've followed his career and it's it's kind of cool to have someone like like that just seen living your dreams and um just pushes you and makes you want to work to get to that level and do exactly what someone like that is doing he's obviously done a lot of great things but um it's just motivated me seeing someone from Colorado um, do exactly what he's done. And it's not just him. I mean, there's, it's kind of funny. Colorado's had a lot of good running backs to come out and go to the NFL, like Austin Eckler and then Philip Lindsay as well. So um, it's kind of the three headed monster of running backs out of Colorado. And hopefully I can be the fourth here soon. So. Yeah, there's, I feel like there's an edge to all of those guys you reference. I remember covering Philip Lindsay in his career I'll never forget it. it was it's like seared in my brain bros in new york city covering the heisman and christian loses and i got no problem saying on this show that he got absolutely screwed in the heisman for what he did that year he should have won it and i see him walk out of the uh, theater and i see this determined look that i had not seen in many people in my lifetime of course he comes out in the rose bowl first drive yeah i think it's a punt return for a touchdown right like he made a statement I, I say that story because I'm curious for you, like how would you define the competitiveness that you have, the competitive edge that you've created? I mean, it's hard to define. I think it's just such a natural thing for me. My whole life, it's been, I've always been so competitive, no matter what it is. You know, like, I'm sure you can ask my mom and she'll go on with stories and stories of stupid things that I'm competitive over, but it's it's there's always something any, anything's a competition to me it's just kind of in my blood i feel like um no matter what we're doing <laughs> what what would your mom say what story do you think she would go to i don't know we got to get her on here i guess because <laughs> she'd probably say something, she'd probably I say something that i wouldn't even think of because it's just it's been my whole life and um i'm glad she's been able to deal with me and have my competitive nature but um one thing that's always been fun when I go home is ping pong against my dad. My dad claims he's like the ping pong champion. and I always smoke him. Uh, he, he's always talking about how he was so good at ping pong in Italy and how he never got beat ever. And then it got serious. I actually bought like a hundred dollar ping pong paddle. and I, I dedicated myself to never ever losing to him because that's just kind of the competitor I am. <laughs> I went out of my way and bought a real nice paddle and, um, I'd practice a lot to end up beating him, but now he's, he can't touch me. So it's been funny. We have a, we have a little household trophy that gets passed from room to room, depending on uh, who's the winner of our ping pong tournaments whenever I'm back in town. So it's kind of funny, but yeah, I mean, I've just been competitive in every single aspect of my life, pretty much my whole life. And I think it's not something I can just, it's just natural for me. I don't know. I'm just, I hate losing more than anything in the world. Um, I hate losing more than I like winning. So I think that's really it. And, uh, and it's just real natural. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you won a lot, right? At Washington State, you took that team and that program, you were part of teams that did special things, right? Whether it was your first year or this past season when you all went through unforeseen changes on the coaching staff. And I felt like you just kind of stayed the course and you continued to win games. How do you, Max, like put your journey at Wazoo into any sort of context? I mean, obviously, so much adversity. Um, I think the senior class and us captains did a real good job of just taking that adversity and rallying the young guys. And we knew it could go either two ways. We could either fold or we could, we could bounce from it. And uh, there's obviously a lot of ups and downs throughout all of us older guys' career um, with teammates passing and coaching changes and all that um but we did what we could do and we we hang tight and we rallied each other and um 
is 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 pretty awesome to see. Um, it could have gone both ways, like I said, and we kind of stuck it out together, and we got the Apple Cup back again this year, which is pretty awesome. And uh, it was it was a fun year, definitely for all the circumstances we went through and everything, especially with COVID the year before. I mean, yeah, there's just so much adversity this team has been through, and I'm just grateful um, for the way things turned out and to leave with a good note in that Apple Cup trophy because that means a lot as well. <laughs> when it got hard, and you referenced some moments, you lost multiple players, uh, passed away in your time or any seniors' time at Washington State, uh, all the adversity that everybody knows about. When it got hard, like at its lowest, what was your self-talk like? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I'd been through so much and I knew, I knew I had a lot of people and a lot of loving people in my corner, loving teammates, loving family and people who cared about me. Um, one thing that was real special about this team is the love we had for one another. Um, when we got to the lowest of lows, like you said, we just really bounced on each other's love for one another and how much we really care about each other. And it's a lot bigger than football at the end of the day. Um, just checking in on one another um, often and pretty much sticking together. Because at the end of the day, if you're not you're not yourself, you, you got to rally on your brother and speak up and you know you know whole, the whole deal. Um, obviously, we went through some stuff early on, mental health and all that, and then we lost Price and just crazy stuff. But we all rallied on each other and just talked to one another and opened up to each other and sat down. And I mean, no one's, no one's too big for love. And we just really came together like that. And no one's too big for love. I think that's a really powerful statement in this macho sport that is football, right? It's the gladiator sport. But I feel like that conversation is opening up because the greatest teams, like we, you have that love. Like I can remember every player that I played with every dude and love him to this day and I'm 40, right? And you'll feel the same way, I'm sure that you're 40 or when you are, uh, but you were a leader amid a lot of the tragedy that you went through. Like, were you the catalyst to talk in that way? And if so, do you remember a moment where you said, hey guys, like we need to open up and, and lean on each other as you just referenced around this, the singular word of love? Yeah, um, I mean, the locker room, in hard moments like that, we would we'd call team meetings, like captain-led meetings and stuff, and we'd just have open conversations and talk. Um, like you were saying, uh, it's good to get the emotions out and <laughs> when you're in situations like that. And uh, I think talking is the best thing you can do. Um, so we just really sat down as a team and we had conversations and we spoke like men and we talked about our feelings. And sometimes it's, it's weird because um, – we're big, strong football players, but at the end of the day, I mean, your mental health is the most important thing and um, making sure each and every one of our teammates was doing right and being all right in the head and saying and stuff was, was obviously all of our priorities. And um, I was blessed to have the other captains check in on me and just kind of all rallied with each other. So it was, it was real good. It's great, man. What did the football field serve as for you? this past year with everything you have gone through? Just a place to let go and go play the game I love. I mean, that's what's great about football is you can just forget about all the all the BS going on outside of football, outside. Hey, you forget about it and you focus on your game and your craft. And everyone who's on that field loves the game and loves to play and it's fun. It's a brotherhood, it's a family. Friendships are great. And Obviously, the opportunity to go out each and every day and get 1% better is always an amazing thing. And uh, just, it's great. Like, games are obviously so much fun, but even practice, you just get an opportunity to go out every single day and do people you love and do something you love is it's, it's unbelievable. Coming up on The It Factory. Anyone in Washington knows how big that game is. I didn't even know really that big, how big of a deal it was until I got to Washington. And then I learned real quick <laughs> the hate for the other school. <laughs> it's real. 
the uh, the uh, rivalry is real. So going out there and finally getting that cup after what seven, eight years, whatever it was, way too long. It was it's surreal. It was an absolutely great feeling. Probably one of the best feelings I've had in my whole sports career. Locker room, Apple Cup, you were the cigar. Take us in that moment and now reflective of that moment because it's been a long time coming for your school to win that game. Yeah, that, that game was just – if you're a Cougar, you know how big that game is. And obviously they know how big that game is. Anyone in Washington knows how big that game is. I didn't even know really – that big, how big of a deal it was until I got to Washington, and then I learned real quick <laughs> the hate for the other school. <laughs> it's real. The uh, the uh, rivalry is real. So going out there and finally getting that cup after what seven, eight years, whatever it was, way too long. It was it's surreal. It was an absolutely great feeling. Probably one of the best feelings I've had. And my whole sports career, um, walking off with the Apple Cup and celebrating with my teammates in the locker room and the coaching staff and everyone. It was so special and obviously the cigar was just <laughs> a little celebration of to, a little toast to what we did. It was a pretty cool moment and I think that picture will be definitely a picture I'll look back at when I'm 40, 50 years old and be like, those were the days. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I want that one side by side with you hurdling somebody when you're like 10 years old. Yeah. Put those two together, yeah, bro, that'd, and keep stacking that'd be it. Prime right uh, there. Amen. So uh, you're in the process now. You're training for the draft. Uh, you've chosen to go train for the draft, and you chose to forego the bowl game, which is common practice now. Um, and I've publicly stated, like, I totally get it and support that wholeheartedly. But what is that process like? I'd love you to open up a little bit on deciding is that a tough decision is that a no-brainer decision and what did your teammates say to you when they found out you weren't going to play in that game yeah um I think the decision it's obviously a tough decision no matter what even if it's clear as day you should go it's still tough to leave leave college leave your friends leave your teammates and all that um for me I felt like I'd done enough and I felt like I'd put in enough work and prove myself enough to the point where I'm ready to bet on myself and take my shot. So um, I set my mind to it and my family rallied behind me. Uh, all my people in my corner rallied behind me and I'm here. I'm, I'm taking my shot. So excited. I'm, I'm glad for some opportunities I've got um, as far as the bowl game, like the, the senior bowl and the, the combine invite, which will be huge. But um, reflecting back on the bowl game, uh, that was a real tough decision. I was originally planning on playing in the game. Um, I'm a big team guy, and but at the end of the day, I had to look at it, and I lost three O linemen, three of my starting guys, which was tough. And really, without them, I'm 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 not much. And I looked at it like, okay, um, risk reward. I, I want to go train for the my dreams, the biggest biggest shot of my life, and something I've worked for my whole life. And so I really was. Just rather being safe than sorry. I mean, look at some some other big NFL prospects who did play in the bowl game and ended up getting hurt, and it's detrimental. So um, obviously, it's a real tough decision because it's. I love my team and I love Cougar Nation, and I, I wanted to do one more special game with them, but I had to do what was best for me at the end of the day. Um, my teammates, I I talked to all them, and they had nothing but respect for my decision. They kind of they all understood where I was coming from, and I think they all know exactly what I'm about. So um, it was really like nothing but respect. It seemed like, and everyone wished me well and was was excited for me. So I was happy, happy to see that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the norm. Anyone I've talked to, I remember Christian, he was one of the first guys ever opt out of a bowl. And when he told his teammates, they gave him a standing ovation, right? So I think that's kind of where the sport is going around the majority of those bowl games. But you said a phrase in there that I've gotten to know extremely well over 15, 20 years now, which is Coog Nation. That place is, is so unique, as you know, Martin Stadium. That fan base is so dynamic, as you know, and it's so unique. Right? It's a small pocket 
in this beautiful part of the country that has a confidence about themselves. Do you feel like you relate like brilliantly with this fan base? And, and how would you describe your love affair with Coog Nation? My love for Coog Nation is indescribable because it's, it's so beyond words. Um, to go to Pullman and actually experience Coog Nation for four years was a blessing. It was so cool to see. Um, they rallied behind me just as much as I rallied behind them. Um, be, be games out there where I'd be in the red zone, they'd all be chaining my name in the stadium, the whole stadium would be chaining my name. And it was pretty special to see. And uh, I'm just so grateful that I got to play for such an awesome fan base. And Coop Nation is just so much bigger than you really think it is. So you might think it's just Pullman in Washington, but you wear a Coop logo anywhere you go, you're going to get a Go Coops. Like I got here and walking through the airport, I probably got two or three Go Coops. <laughs> it's just, it's a common thing. Everyone, everyone knows the Cougs and um, Cougar Nation is just spread across the whole country. So um, it's, it's real special. It's a, I define it as family, just a real big family, tight knit family. Um, only Cougs know what being a Coug is all about, and uh, it's it's a brotherhood, it's a friendship, it's love. And, and I I'm gonna miss Pullman. Uh, I had some special moments there, and met some great people, some amazing friends, and had some great coaches. It was a great four years, and it went so quick. <laughs> yeah. It always does, oh, right? Quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. feels like I was just in high school, like high school freshman. Now I'm declaring and training for the NFL. It's kind of wild. It is wild. When you make that transition to shoot your shot, as you referenced, do you feel like it becomes, or has it become like a business? Like, what what is it like, or is it just such a singular focus now? Because you don't have school, you don't have tutoring. It's just training for a forty. You know, specific elements that'll happen in a combine and a pro day yeah it's it's weird like i really am just waking up and doing exactly what i love it's so nice like waking up and training working out and going and getting an opportunity to get better and uh it hasn't really sunk in but it's like if i could do this for a living it'd be the biggest blessing in the world to just wake up and play football <laughs> um just waking up and working out and training for the combine. It's been so fun and I've enjoyed every moment of it. It's really just like training to be a track athlete right now because the combine is obviously such a big speed thing and um, all those drills. It's obviously a little reflects a little bit of football, but it's, it's really all about speed. And um, so the training is definitely, definitely a little bit different than like off season football training, I'd say, where it's just like meat and potatoes get super strong and, lift as much weight as you can. It's more technique based, speed based. Um, so it's, it's been fun. I've been with a great group of guys out here and I've met a lot of cool people and it's been a lot of fun so far. So I'm excited for the opportunities and everything that's to come. All right, so let's pretend you're at the senior bowl, you're at the combine and I'm the GM. And I ask you, okay, Max, what value will you bring to our organization? As far as a football player or as far as a person or everything, <laughs> I'd say um, as far as a football player, I could bring um, a versatile running back who's willing to do it all. Um, I, I could do anything. Um, I can play in the slot. I can catch passes out of the backfield. I can run between the tackles. I can run outside the tackles. But I'm also willing to do special teams and play special teams. Obviously, I didn't get a lot of opportunity in college, but uh, whatever it takes to be on the roster, I'll live in the special teams coach coach's office if I have to. Um, but as a person, you're getting a leader and someone who loves the game of football and someone who really cares about his teammates. Um, I'm definitely, I'd definitely be excited to just get in the locker room and have an opportunity to meet people from different cultures and different places as um, kind of done it at the college the last four years. And I've met a lot of great people and uh, really enjoyed it. Well said, man. I think you're going to be an incredible addition to whatever team ends up picking you up. Uh, with that said, the title of this show is the it factory and you've heard it 
he's got the it factor. Max has it. He, he probably somebody probably said it after the hurdle when you were a kid. But I'm curious, how would you define your it factor now if you had to? I'd say mind over matter. Um, might have all the physical skills and the little talents and attributes needed to make it. But I think at the end of the day, my mindset's so strong that it's definitely something that's going to help me excel at the next level. Um, I believe in myself more than, more than I can explain. And um, I've always had such a belief in my skill set and my ability and never being scared of anyone or anything. And, um, I think it's really helped me throughout my career and in football and outside of football, just determination and self-determination. And uh, it's hard to even explain, but I just know that I'm capable of doing whatever I set my mind to. And it's just been like that my whole life. And I've just always relied on myself. And um, I think my hit factor is really just staying level-headed and sticking to myself and my gut. Yeah. If you had to finish this following sentence, how would you do it? It all comes down to, as far as me. Yeah, you think all the journeys you've been in, right? You've been highly recruited. One might argue under recruited. You've been highly valued. Now in the NFL, are you undervalued? You've seen tragedy. You've seen difficulty. You've met that moment. You've opened up your heart in a sport that doesn't often celebrate opening up your heart within this sport. And now here you are on the precipice of a dream. So with all that said, Max, it all comes down to what? It all comes down to uh, the size of the fight and the dog, not the dog and the fight. I feel like that kind of has defined me my whole career as far as everything. Um, being overlooked, being overseen, he's this, he's that. At the end of the day, I just believe in myself, like I said earlier. Um, it's, it's the size of the fight that's inside me, and I'm I'm a fighter, and um, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to to succeed and be on top. And I've kind of always stuck to that motto my whole life because I'm not the biggest dude. Um, but I don't think that matters. I don't think that matters at all. Um, but that you can, you can go to say he's. There's, there's always going to be people doubting. There's always going to be people saying you can't do this, you can't do that. But at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself and you look at yourself in the mirror and you know you can do it, you can do it. And I've kind of always stuck to that. And my self-belief and my determination is going to lead me to exactly where I want to go. Yeah, I think that sentence you just described, every fan in Martin Stadium and Coug Nation probably relate to that to a certain degree right? It's not the size of the dog, right? It's, it's everything inside. It's all the internal fight that you have. I feel like that is so the colors of your school and everything that you've represented, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We wish you so much luck. I'm so excited to watch you on Sundays. I hope that uh, on Sundays I see you and Minshew doing some fun stuff together <laughs> and then post game, like you both rock jorts together and like so, some sweet outfit. I, I just want that one photo this season. I got to make it happen. That'd be real special. Probably run into him here in the next couple of weeks and we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Has he given you any advice here on the process as you're going through it? Yeah, just to stick the course. And I mean, I've talked to all the different guys from Dez to Minshew and Dillard a little bit and uh, even Gordon. And they've all just kind of said, just bet on yourself, work hard, keep your head down, and the rest will work itself out. Um, obviously, everyone has a different path and a different journey, and I know I'm going to have my own unique path and journey, and whatever it is, I just know I'm in control, and I'm excited to work, and I'm excited to just bring myself into a locker room and give it every single thing I got every single day. So, Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch that happen. I know fans listening to this, are also excited about what's happening in Pullman. Uh, you had a chance to be coached at the time it was interim head coach in Jake Dicker, but now he is the head coach at Washington State. What are Kook fans going to get with him as the head coach? What can we expect from his teams? You're going to get someone who's going to bleed day in and day out for his team. He's he's one of the sharpest guys I've ever met. He's he's so by the book and like this, this, 
this, this, but it's great. He's organized. I think he was the perfect hire. And obviously, the last couple of games, you got a little taste of what he's, he's, what he's capable of. He, uh, he's going to do real well, I think. Um, I'm excited to see how it goes, especially because they're running a new offense. They're getting a tight end there, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> that hasn't happened in years. So it should be interesting to watch, but I'm excited. And I know he's going to, he's going to really get those guys in right. And I'm sure the leaders on the team who are still there are going to really rally and bring the team together and they're going to work hard. And I was talking to the coach actually earlier today and he said, the team's looking great, working hard and having a good off season. And so I'm excited for him. I'm really excited. So I think it's, it's gonna be weird watching and looking back and being like, it just doesn't even feel like I'm not on the team anymore. So it's it's weird. It still hasn't really sunk in, but um, I'm excited for what's to come for Washington State in the future. It's gonna be special. Hey Amen. All right, well, it's a bye week, and we're calling one of the Washington State games. You're coming up in the booth with Ted and myself, and we want to hear about the next phase of your life, Max. We appreciate the time. Absolutely. Let's let's make that happen. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you got him, man. That is Max Borghi. Think about that journey from his dad in Italy, learning about the sport, hurtling somebody, falling in love with the craft, and now, as he referenced so eloquently, betting on himself, shooting his shot in the NFL. Follow him along this journey. It's going to be awesome. We're going to keep tracking NFL prospects from the Pac-12 Conference as they get geared up for Senior Bowl, Combine, and, of course, the NFL Draft and beyond. You know where to find us, pack 12.com slash insider or wherever you listen to podcasts, just type in the It Factory and Yogi Roth and we have you covered. So with that, stay safe, share the podcast, tell a friend, keep on coming back. Peace.